Hello and welcome to part 6 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup and I hope you're still awake and I haven't just bored you to death with pure monotone goodness. Alright, so in this episode, um, if you happen to remember from the last one, we just got joined by some migrants. I'm kind of curious how many actually came. I think it was four from what I saw before. So I'm going to quick press U to bring up my unit list and uh, take a look here. So what did I get? Looks like I got a bowyer that makes bows. I got a planter, an herbalist, and maybe one other guy. Yeah, one of these other guys. Anyway, so it was a few guys. They joined up. Alright, so first thing I want to do is get all that stuff in the wagon underground. So uh, what I need to do to make this happen is designate a few stockpiles. So again, P is the hotkey for stockpile, as you can see right here, P. Uh, so I've got a wood stockpile above ground, that's fine. Um, I'm going to bring my food down here, though. Uh, I'm going to take my food, um, press F to make a food stockpile, and then I'm going to designate, using Enter, one corner of the food stockpile, and then I'll drag it to about here and there and uh, it's probably hard to see against the background but there is uh, kind of a checkered gray area this is your food stockpile now so if I press escape and I press resume theoretically uh, my dwarves should start hauling my food down here from the surface and here they come so you can see they're bringing barrels and bags and all kinds of good stuff downstairs where it's nice and safe hopefully so while they're doing this, let's go back up to the surface. Now, I need to do something with this wood. Uh, what I really would like to do is start making some beds. So, first thing I'm going to do is show you how to build a workshop. Workshops are kind of like, you know, factories, if you're familiar with, you know, real-time strategy games. Um, in the sense that they are, you know, specialized to produce certain kinds of things. So, to make beds, what we need to make is a carpenter's workshop. So, to build, you're going to press the B hotkey for building. Um, you're going to get this huge list. And uh, you have to navigate this, by the way, with plus and minus. The game is kind of inconsistent about whether you use your directional arrow keys on the keyboard or plus and minus to navigate menus, but it should tell you down here. Alright, so... Um, I happen to know what I want already, but I'm just going to scroll through this a little bit and show you all the kinds of different things you can build. There's a lot of different things, and some of them are not really items as much as they're categories, and that happens to be the case for workshops, which is what I want to build. Uh, there's not just one kind of workshop, there's a bunch. So if I press W for workshop now, I'm going to get all the different kinds of workshops. So what I want is a carpenter's workshop. So the series of keys to get there again was B for build, W for workshop, and C for carpenter's workshop. All you people playing StarCraft 2 right now, I'm sure that you will love this game because it's so much micromanaging. Alright, so uh, here you'll see I have a little, you know, this 3x3 three three thing of little X's here that are green. Uh, this is where I'm going to place the workshop. You'll notice if I try to place it somewhere it doesn't want to go. Uh, you know, you'll have kind of a red and purple, you know, thing tells you, oh, I can't put it on top of water, I can't put it on top of trees, and I can't put it anywhere. Well, I can put it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and place it. Now it's going to ask you what you want to make it out of. Uh, normally it would ask you, you know, you would have the option to choose like stone to make it out of, for instance, but since I haven't mined up any stone yet, I'll just make it out of wood. I happen to have some oak logs sitting nearby. So uh, you use plus and minus to choose what kind of material you want to make your workshop out of. And then you, when you have it, you press enter. I've got kind of a surplus of alder, so I will make this workshop out of alder. Press enter. And there, um, it's kind of hard to see, but you get some kind of partial construction on the ground. Now, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't just uh, come out ready to use. You need to actually have somebody with a certain skill come and build it. And specifically, to see what skill is needed to build it, um, you need to use a new key, which I haven't shown you yet, which is Q, the Q key. 
Uh, Q is what you use to set building tasks and preferences. Notice that this does not have Q in there anywhere, but anyway, nonetheless, the key is Q. If you press Q, uh, Q is how you interact with things that are already built or in the process of being built. So you see when I get close to it with my little uh, X cursor here, it starts to blink and it tells me some information about the building. It says the construction is inactive, so I can see that it is under construction, but it's inactive because nobody's building it right now. Um, it's waiting for construction, it says, and it needs carpentry. Well, I happen to have a dwarf with carpentry, as you know, I, I chose when, before the game started, so once my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and resume the game, and once my dwarf that has a carpentry skill gets done hauling all the food down below, you should see that he goes and starts building that workshop. I'm going to go ahead and pause it for now. Actually, no, there he goes. So he just, you saw he went and grabbed a little, you know, some wood, some alder from here, the wood stockpile, and went up and built this. Okay, so now, to build something, you are going to press, I'm going to go ahead and pause again, you're going to press Q again. Uh, Q is, uh, again, that set building tasks and preferences. Uh, and just to reiterate, Q is what you use to interact with things that have already been built or are in the process of being built. Um, and it lets you assign, you know, work orders and things like that to buildings. Okay, so uh, you can see now when I get my cursor close to the building, I've got some new options here. Uh, what I want to do is add a new task right here, A. So if I press A, it brings up a list of all the different things I can make. Well, what I want to make is some beds. So if I scroll down and highlight construct bed, or you can just press the hot key, which is thankfully provided for you. This is B. So now I've got, this is an order to construct one bed. If I want to make five beds, for instance, which I do, I can just press A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, this is one way to do it. If you want to remove a task, uh, as you can see here, you can press C when you have a task highlighted to remove a task. There is another way to make, uh, to build things and to assign tasks, and that is the job manager, uh, the job list. So J, job list, some people might prefer to do it this way. You press J, and it gives you um, a list, a, a, a view that's similar to that U hotkey, um, but this just tells you kind of what, um, what active jobs there are. So what we want to do here is press M for manager. Now, uh, you see there's nothing here. There's some hotkeys here. What we want to do is press Q to make a new order. Um, now this is context sensitive so you can actually just start typing in what you want to do so I want a bed so I type in bed and sure enough there it is construct bed press enter and it'll ask you for a quantity I want five press enter okay so there it is uh, there's my work order for five beds so I escape out of here escape out of here and now in theory if I press Q again and go look at my workshop um, well, the tasks don't show up there, but let's see if the guy makes them anyway. I'm going to press to resume this. Theoretically, the guy will start making the beds. I'm going to pause it for a second until I see whether he actually does or not. Okay, so my guy uh, never came to start working on the beds. Uh, and I can only assume this is because I don't have uh, a noble with the manager position. I don't want to confuse you too much, but suffice it to say that I'm just going to go ahead and do this old-fashioned way. I'm just going to go to the workshop and manually assign this task. So I'm going to add new task, choose bed, and press enter, or just press B. And then I escape out of this, and now if I resume, theoretically, sure enough, there's my guy. He just grabbed a pile of wood, went into the workshop, he's got a little saw, he's going to make a bed. Now, um, if I don't choose somewhere for him to put the beds, I think they just stay at the workshop. What I'd like to do is just have a nice little pile that they can go in. So what I'm going to do is make another stockpile. Press P for stockpile, and you'll see one here, U, furniture storage. So I'm going to choose furniture storage, and right next to my little carpenter workshop, I'm going to create a little stockpile just for furniture. Now if I resume, 
Oh, yeah, so I actually brought some furniture with me. Maybe I better make this stockpile a little bit bigger. Because you see, all the guys, uh, all my dwarves are now bringing all of the furniture that I brought with me. Um, so like anvils and barrels and stuff count as furniture. And they're bringing it to the stockpile. Well, the stockpile is too small for all this stuff. I can tell already, because they're bringing all this stuff and this thing's pretty small. So to remove a stockpile and make a bigger one, I have to go again to P for stockpile. I now need to remove designation. You see here with the X. This is kind of like a stockpile in reverse. It uses the same method of selection, but it just removes any stockpile that you highlight. Now I'm going to make a new furniture storage stockpile that's just going to be bigger than the old one. Significantly bigger. Why not? Bam! There's my new furniture storage. All right. Now I'm going to resume. My guys might be temporarily confused because I changed the size of the stockpile mid-transit, but sooner or later, they'll figure it out. Okay, so this guy's now making beds, and I can see that the beds are starting to appeal, appear in the furniture stockpile. So, I'm going to go ahead and get these builds, uh, builds, beds set up somewhere where they'll actually be useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game temporarily. I'm going to go downstairs to a lower level. Now, uh, this room I've chosen for the food stockpile. I'm going to eventually have some other stuff in here. This little room uh, I've set aside to be a dormitory. A dormitory is kind of like a communal place where you can go and uh, have all your dwarves sleep. Like I said, they will sleep on the ground and they'll sleep wherever they can, but they prefer to have somewhere designated to sleep. So in order to put the beds here, I need to build the beds. I know this is kind of counterintuitive. It's like I, I already did make the beds, but building uh, can also refer to placing things that have been built, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is uh, B for building. And you see bed is actually the second one down, just B. So now I have a little cursor. And uh, just like I did with the workshop, I can place it somewhere. And it'll ask me which bed I want. I have three beds up above, and they're made of different materials. So I'm going to choose ashen beds. I'm going to press B again and make another one here. Press B again and make another one here. So I've chosen these three spots for the beds. Now if I escape out and resume, my dwarves should soon haul the beds downstairs and I will show you how you make this into a dormitory that's set aside for them to sleep. Okay, so remember I said Q is how you interact with things that have already been built or in the process of building. Be uh, beds kind of count as building, so if you press Q now and you go close to one of these beds, you'll notice that it starts blinking and I have this option here to press R to make it a bedroom. That's what I want to do. Um, Normally, if you had doors here, which I'll show you later, um, that would allow me to make this you know, room exactly the right size. But since I don't have it, um, and I try to resize this room um, using, you know, using the plus and minus scheme, you'll see that once I get to the edge, I can actually go outside of it. If I had doors there, I wouldn't be able to do this. Um, for now, I'll just make it this size. I think this is the right size. I'm going to press Enter. That just tells you know the game that this whole area is designated as a bedroom. Now here's the important part. In order to make this communal sleeping area, you have to designate it as a dormitory. So you see, after I chose the size of the room, I have this option here, D, dormitory. It's currently set to no. If I press D, you'll see that dormitory will change to dormitory yes or Y. And now I can just press escape, and I've got a little area for sleeping for my dwarves. I can resume the game. So my dwarves get tired, you'll probably see periodically, they'll come down here, jump in the bed, and get some nap time. Okay, I actually didn't have time in this episode to get to underground farming, so I'll go ahead and uh, do another quick one before I go to sleep. And I'll see you soon.